Hi Soccer Universe and welcome to the La Liga review and since I didn't see as much of La Liga I basically saw one game in full and I saw highlights of three others and little bits of there. This is also to the Spanish football podcast. Uh, I decided yeah let's pack in the two neighboring countries of Spain so we also add Ligue 1 where I also didn't see all that much although I really wanted and um, then Portugal as well to make it a well-rounded video. Let's go to La Liga uh, right from the get-go and the uh, weekend started with Granada beating Espanyol 2-1. Uh, costly loss, you want to say for Espanyol. Raul de Tomas though still makes another goal. He keeps his goal scoring form, just cannot really lift uh, Espanyol. But the big one and the game that I watched was, of course, the Derby Madrileño. Since I'm wearing Real Madrid, I wore it already in the preview for this weekend. Kind of a little bit, you know, it's a beautiful jersey, so why not? I uh, saw that one and I was surprised that in the first half, um, Atletico really was the better team. 10 minutes it took roughly, and, and, and that those 10, 10 minutes, Real Madrid maybe had the first chance through Ramos uh, and so on, but. Then it was really um, Athletic Madrid who had chances through Vitolo, Saul Niguez and also Correa uh, were there. I think uh, Correa even hitting the uh, post outside. There was a penalty call, Meorata on Casemiro. Would have been a soft penalty to be honest, but yeah, uh, could have... I can see if it was given, because Kant, Kant was there on the other side, it was not much. So I think I was alright with it not, not being given. Um, the one thing I have to say, it was the wave of uh, upset, but the one time Korea runs clear on uh, to the goal and kind of put it on goal. And that kind of encapsulated for me uh, all the trouble that befalls Atletico Madrid, because hey, you need to score goals. And this is where they really, really have trouble this season. And yeah, so it goes nil nil two to the half, oh, slightly flattering for Real Madrid. Um, but then the game continues in the same direction towards this very cute Real Madrid fan block. I always have to laugh when I see this, 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 the lower, I think, sector behind the goal, all dressed in white, but it's so tiny uh, among the other, other huge stadium. It frankly looks ridiculous and a little bit befit not befitting such a huge team. But knowing Real Madrid fans, uh, yeah, they're not exactly the most fervent support unless there's really something to play for. But same you can say for Barcelona, where there's also only two small pockets of uh, fan clubs there. At least you can see them. They're all in white, but I always have to check a little bit about that. Anyway, the game changed and the game was again going more towards this fan block that I talked about and it was due to Zidane making uh, crucial changes. At the halftime, this was his only two changes in the match. He brought on Vinicius Jr. for Cross, and he brought on um, Vasquez, Lucas Vasquez for Isco and then put Valverde into the center. And suddenly the um, sides that were first taken by midfielders and now by real attackers. So you have a trident more or less up front and that caused uh, Atletico Madrid all kinds of problems. And um, it was then over Vinicius Jr. playing a ball nicely to Maldi who slots it into the uh, area where just Bonzema is there in the 56 is lost at home 1-0. Uh, very nicely played goal as we say, it was, was also rather simple and um, Real Madrid then uh, had created a few more chances, but to be honest, uh, there were not many chances and there was not even much coming from Atletico Madrid. And it seemed like really with those two changes, Real Madrid completely contained Atletico. Then, of course, helped that Morata also had to come off, who was a little bit this, um, although he's also not on great form, at least Morata is always a little bit dangerous. He, he is working hard, so uh, that was definitely missing for Atletico Madrid. Real Madrid can easily hang on to, to the win and confirm their lead in the table. And they're not a spectacular team, but they seem to be a well-rounded team. And not only for La Liga. For La Liga, I have, have, have been saying that the latest is a classical, that I really think that Real Madrid looks the more um, 
fit team for the title. I also think for the Champions League, watch out for Real Madrid. This is a team that is really hard to beat. And you wouldn't have said that when the draw was made, when they had to play against Manchester City. But I actually think this is... I see Real Madrid as the favourites. Further games, Valladolid wins in Mallorca and Valencia, unfortunately didn't see anything of that, uh, beat Celta Vigo 1-0 also to confirm their win over Barcelona. We'll see this had a big implication for them uh, in the table. Leganes surprisingly beats Real Sociedad 2-1. Um, Eibar against Betis 1-1 and I saw the highlights of Athletic Club Bilbao against Getafe. Getafe? Being the better team, if you have not seen the 1-0, it's a double 1-2 um, um, before uh, the striker uh, Suarez uh, also goes through a defender and puts it home. A really remarkable goal. Tiki Taka at its finest, have to say. Um, Sevilla also drops points. Only 1-1 one, one against Al Alaves. Uh, that's not something that you would e expect uh, that easily. And even worse, they had to equalize and it came from a penalty through Ocampos. Villarreal against Osasuna 3-1. And then the pressure was on for Barcelona against uh, Levante to at least get, get, get a win to keep Real Madrid to stay close or in touch with Real Madrid. And... From what I saw on the highlights and the game, I saw a teeny bit of the, of the game. Um, Barcelona was dominating proceedings for most of the first half with a Messi who was for once everywhere. And it seems like, yeah, after all the criticism from last week at Kika City and that the, uh, the team maybe is a little bit more showing where it should go. Um, the... It was surely helped that um, Levante played almost uh, like a basketball team, meaning there was no um, big effort on their part, physical effort. Uh, it was more, you know, no fouls and whatever. They just, you know, just played a nice passing game. Uh, Messi had a few chances here himself, but he assisted both goals and it was really... Oops. We had the Super Bowl this weekend. It was really two quarterback assists on, 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 on the first one. A really nice pass to Ansu Fati. And then a little bit later also in the box. Also a nice through uh, ball into Ansu Fati. So within uh, a minute, two goals for Barcelona. Both assisted by Messi and it's 2-0 for Barcelona. Second half, a little bit more from Levante. Uh, Barcelona hold, holding back, still having more chances. Only when in the stoppage time room Vesso puts one back. You there was like two minutes where it was nervy where Levante might have gotten something. And so in the table, I already mentioned it, we have Real Madrid still three points ahead of Barcelona. Now Getafe moves up in third spot. And we had this last season where we thought that Getafe, maybe, maybe. Let's see, maybe they make it to the Champions League. Um, Sevilla is also on 39 points, thanks to that uh, low 20 points drop. And now we see also Valencia in the five and Atletico Madrid in six. So for the first time the in a long time, the jerseys here had to change. Valencia is now ahead of Atletico Madrid. Um, and then Villarreal and the Real Sociedad kind of for this last spot. I'm a little bit worried about Sociedad too, to be honest. Atletico Club also... This is now, you know, this midfield. When you, if you watch the Bundesliga re review, there's this broad mid mid midfield that you don't have the feeling that they will go anywhere. Um, it goes probably until A bar, and there's really only four teams at this very moment, unless the one or two teams have have have, have around one of those teams from Levante to A bar have get in a really bad. Um, streak of losing, but I see only those four teams. It's Mallorca, Leganes, Celta Vigo and Espanyol. And yes, it's only three points for Espanyol, but it will be tough. It will be tough. And I think uh, any... I don't want to make, make a call of who is going to not go down. Let's switch over to League 1, where I really wanted to watch Rennes. Didn't see a thing of it. For whatever reason, the zone, I couldn't find it. 3-2 for Rennes would have been an exciting game to watch. PSG, seemingly it was a messy game for PSG. They, they run away 5-0 winners. Um, 
but it was not all that easy and there were two red cards given for Montpellier uh, the goal scores by Sarabia, Di Maria, Congre and on goal Mbappé and Kurzawa so yeah I'm here to lose uh, nil nil so Toulouse did not lose again uh, that streak stopped Angers, uh, Reims Angers, Reims won 4, Dijon Brest 3 nil, Nîmes Monaco 3 won, Lille gets a win at Strasbourg uh, Nice Lyon 2 won, Metz Saint Etienne 3 won and I saw a little bit of Bordeaux Marseille, but from the Lilla, so I thought this will exactly end how it did. Nil, nil. So in the table, uh, Marseille again dropping points. It's now 12 points that PSG is ahead. Rennes again in third spot. Maybe. I don't quite see them making the Champions League. I think Lille is the more uh, dangerous team. And if Lyon can get something going, they could also move in there. Montpellier sits in fifth spot still. Uh, but as I said, if you look at this midfield, uh, <laughs> it's all close together. Lille in fourth to Dijon in the seventh, 17th spot, it's only 10 points and there's a really, really small increment, so it's really hard to call France. Angers at one point was second in the table, now they are 12, so so much can happen still there. However, the three teams in relegation, they seem to be rather set. Amiens, Nîmes, maybe will fight who will get the relegation spot and to lose as we said they're losing a lot so they will go down last uh i also saw a teeny bit of benfica against bella Ninjas, where benfica had a 2 nil lead they end up 3-2 winners so they stay top of the table family cow only 2-2 so also that story is kind of petering out um we have porto winning 4-0 against setubal and then the big game was between braga and sporting which ends with a 1-0 uh win for sporting another uh not a really big match ma match but you know kind of locally rivalry boavista vitore guimarães uh, 2-0 for boavista and if you look now in portugal Benfica seven points ahead of Porto, Praga is not overtaking, Sporting, Family Cow is not in the top three anymore and probably will not make it in there. I think the top four that we see here will also remain in the top four. Well, let me know what you watched um, from those three leagues over the weekend. I would love to hear your uh, comments. Also, if you can fill in every, everyone on the games that I didn't see, but didn't comment much on, drop a comment below. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that it would interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye.